When somebody comes up and says, oh, bless God, you didn't go believe what happened. Well, let me tell you what God can do. He can change all that. Amen. Amen. Maybe the right thing would be saying, you hear somebody complaining every time you see them. And, Amen. We've got to change our attitude, folks. If we're all the time negative, all we're going to find in life is negative things. Somewhere we got to get out of that pit. Somewhere we got to get out of that hole. Somewhere we got to get out of that place and start serving the Lord. We've been preaching on last Sunday and was going to be this Sunday was going to be talking about being an overcomer. And I'm not going to go and read everything this morning, but I just want to talk to you about a couple of things. We'll finish the message next week. Brother, you can stay down there as long as you want. Hallelujah. Praise God. But one of the things that I was thinking about was this. An overcomer. To be an overcomer, we established this last week that we have to submit ourselves to God and to resist the devil. Amen? Submitting ourselves to God and resisting the devil. God wants us to be an overcomer. Satan wants you to be taken out by the undertaker. Amen? He's got a different agenda. So God wants us to be an overcomer. That means it, it didn't mean that we're not going to go through things. It didn't mean there won't be storms, there won't be crisis, there won't be death. It doesn't mean that there won't be things that we have to go through in this life. But what it means is to be an overcomer, you got to rise above. How do you overcome? you got to get over it. you got to get above it. you got to get above that situation to overcome it so God can take care of it and then you can be on to the next phase of your life. Amen? Whatever that is, God does not want us to fail. God does not want us to get defeated in the circumstances of life. And He says in His Word, the Bible says, we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the Word of our testimony. That means by the blood of the Lamb, I can rise above everything this morning, church. Did you hear me? This idea. I can rise above everything anything through the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. What is my testimony? The blood of Jesus rising me up above things so I can tell people I made it through. Amen. Isn't that good? We didn't have to do anything. We're over there. How many times? How many times have we? I'm just going to give you an example. How many times have we went through a battle and we might have said something along this line. Okay, God, I've been serving you for a long time and I'm pretty mature. I got this. I got news for you. The Bible will call you a fool if you try to do that. Amen? Because I've got to have the blood of Jesus for my testimony to come to fruition. My testimony used to be a prayer request that the devil said would never happen. Now, I'm an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of my testimony. Amen. Amen. When the devil comes to your house, you got to get your testimony book out and start testifying. And I want you to know, he won't stay long. That's right. That's right. I don't know about anybody else, but this is a good place this morning. Can I preach a little bit? Do you mind if I preach a little bit this morning? He's going to help us rise above it. I'm going to submit myself to God. And I'm going to resist the devil. And whenever I resist him, the Bible says he's going to flee from us. Hallelujah. And then we're going to overcome. We're going to overcome. I don't care how bad the situation is. I don't care how difficult it is. It says that we are overcomers. It didn't say just sometimes we're overcomers. Amen? How many knows this? 
Whenever you got saved, did anybody read in the Bible anywhere that you've got to go through a six month probation period when you get saved, you know, to have all the promises of God? No, it was instantaneous. Whenever you got saved, whenever you said, Jesus, come into my heart, it was an instantaneous right then. You didn't have to wait till next week to get to get something from God, from His Word. You didn't have to for healing anything at that moment. When you get saved, that's all you need. The blood of Jesus. And then your testimony begins. And then, when you're walking, you don't have that probation period. So now... And let me go ahead and just tell you this real quick. If you can think back and remember whenever you first got saved, before we got tainted by the world and what they said God couldn't do, most of us, whenever we first got saved, believed God for more things than we ever had before. Because when we first got saved, I'm going to tell you something. Whenever I first got saved, I would pray for everything. There wasn't nothing I didn't pray about. And God would answer those prayers. There was things that God done. And it was the first part. And you know what? People would, people would tell you. You know, and I look at this so many times. You see somebody get saved. Don't they look excited? Don't they look happy? And all of us sit around and we sit here and we say, oh, they're, they're, just, they're just newly saved. Just give them a couple of months and they'll be like the rest of us. God forbid. Let us get a catch of that fire. Let us get a catch of that salvation. Let something stir our spirit one time that we can get a hold of. Something that will mean a difference. Something. Listen, folks. If we're just going to come here and we're just going to preach a message and we're just going to come in here and listen to it and not change any, we might as well take the pews out and make it a bowl of them. We could come and bowl. Just talk. Because that's what most churches today are, are social clubs. All they are is places to go and hear about somebody's book or hear about somebody else or what somebody else is doing. Can I tell you this? When we get our eyes off of one another and get our eyes off of man and get our eyes back on God, then we'll begin to see the supernatural begin to happen. Because listen, I... I can only bring the natural. You can only bring the natural. All we can do, this is the natural. We can bring it. I can't bring anything else except this natural. But whenever I walk into this building, somehow, if God comes in and touches me, He brings the super. And it becomes the supernatural. If we don't have God, all we're doing is natural things in here this morning. We just sung some songs. We heard a few good songs. We, 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 we hear some preaching. But if we come to hear from God, Lord, what do you want to say to me today? And let me tell you this. Sometimes God speaks to me during the preaching. Sometimes He speaks to me during the singing. Sometimes He speaks to me when I'm at the altar. But somewhere, if I will open up my heart and be quiet and listen, God will speak a word to us. Because some... Thing that you're going through and I'm going to go through this next week, we're going to receive the power that we need today at the altar. Amen. God knows what we need even before we get to it. And can I tell you this? We know that God is all-knowing, but it makes Him feel great. When his children spend time with him. Yes. When we pray. When we read the word. When we get alone. We spend time with God. And you know what? The more, I don't know about the, anybody else, but the more that we're getting in this life, it seems like the less time I'm having. To do anything with. Amen. The more that we come into this place and we waste time, we're making a commitment to the Lord. Lord, I'm going to serve you no matter what. I want to be an overcomer in these last days. Anybody else want to be an overcomer? Yes. Just raise your hand. You want to you overcome? Yes. Remind yourself every time. 
the blood of the Lamb. There's nothing that I don't face in this life that the blood of the Lamb can't conquer. Amen. And then that becomes our testimony. Every one of us has a testimony in here. And I want to explain this one last time for everybody in here. And I hope, children, you listen to this too. When you're witnessing, when you're giving your testimony, you can witness to someone and you can tell them about anybody you want to. However the Lord leads you is what you need to do. But can I tell you this one simple thing? Your testimony of how you got saved is more powerful than anything else you can tell. Because that's when you encounter God for yourself. Amen. We can talk about Moses. We can talk about Noah. We can talk about women of God. We can talk about all that. But the, the Bible says that we're an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testament or our testimony. Amen? Then our testimony will be the best witnessing tool that we have. And I'll just say this one time. If you go to the Scripture, it might be more than this. It's been a long time since... The, the scriptures are so big and why I'm on this subject the, uh, the scriptures is so big that many times you get it kind of fig, trying to wonder if the number's right amen but Paul told his testimony in the Bible three different occasions he gave his testimony that light shining down knocking him off the donkey all of that testimony. He told it three times in the Bible. It was powerful. He was trying to show us that the things that God does for us. Yes, we can tell other things that can be just as great. We can talk about uh, we can talk about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and talk about the fiery furnace or we can talk about David and Goliath and see how that but it is no more powerful than what it was when Jesus forgave us of our sins. Amen. Which brought to my attention another song that I remember back in the day. Amen. But Jesus is all we need. But sometimes we don't realize He's all we need till He's all we got. And some of you know where that got place is. You've been to that place. And when He's all you got, He's all you can call out to because nothing else is happening. Nothing else is helping. But the Lord, the Lord this morning, don't try to make this journey without Him. Don't try to make it through this wrestling matches that we have without Him. Don't try to make it through without giving your testimony because what that does is it continually reminds you of what happened when you gave your heart to the Lord. Amen. Let's walk this life. Let's let this Word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. If we let that, that Word right here, if it's, a, if it's like a flashlight and it's going to light up our pathway, it's going to show us our feet. How many knows you can stumble over roots and stuff? Rocks and junk that stays in the walkway. You can trip over those things. But if you've got a Word, if you've got a light, if you've got something that's illuminating your feet and then it's illuminating the pathway that you're on, what that means is that God can illuminate anything that's coming your way that might mean to harm you. You see it. You see it. Thanks, Stevie. <laughs> you see it. Amen? Praise God. But God has given us this Word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. You know what else is that this... And always remember, there's another Scripture that I remember, and this is this. That we would hide this Word in our heart that we might not sin against God. Hide this Word in our heart that we might not sin against God. Amen? Praise God that lamp unto our feet, that light unto our pathway.